And I know, I know, life can be beautiful. And they come flooding in. Here they are. Hello, welcome, come one, come all. Bring your granny, bring your cat. Come and find out all about Heather's. Welcome to Heather's day. Welcome. Oh, I think we have a certain Jodie Steele in the house. Shall I check? Where's Jodie? Has anyone seen Jodie? Has anyone seen Jodie? Let me have a look. A message from Jodie Steele. Guys, she can't come. Jodie Steele can't come today. Jodie Steele is not coming. Jodie Steele is not coming. I'm joking, she's here. <laughs> Can you see Jodie Steele? I'm sorry, Sarah! Ah! Don't be sorry. I honestly, I well, missed you message, Jodie. I was doing a social distance walk. Look, she's in her car. That is brilliant. Oh my hey, God. Hi. Mate, honestly, it's going crazy on here. So I'll let it go crazy for a bit while you sort yourself out. How is everybody doing? The corn nuts. Oh my God, we've got 107 people. What just happened? I, I literally, I just had a walk with Zoe Burkett and her daughter and her dog, Honey, who's who I'm obsessed with, by the way. The dog is like my my dog. And I cried when I saw them. I cried. Um, babe, this is so old. Like, we haven't I seen anyone. I did my anyone. first show. I did my first show with Zoe Burkett. Oh. Stop it, I did my you. first job with her. She's lovely. Oh, I did oh, rent with her. Hero. With Paul Taylor Mills. Oh. oh, PTM. A bit of the PTM. Right, enough okay, about me. In. This is all about Jodie. So we've got a hundred people watching. We've got a hundred people. Do not swear your lies. I won't. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. So where do we start now? Let's start. So I finished GSA. I peed off and um, Jodie Steele arrived in GSA. Um, brilliant. <laughs> let's, let's not talk oh, about GSA. Yes, hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. We don't really have time to talk about GSA. Thank okay. you. <laughs> wow, look at that delivery. Look, she's got Amazon. <laughs> oh, guys, so, I'm loving this. I think this. it may be my headphones so that I can record properly. <laughs> oh, God, it's all going on. This is hilarious. Yes, GSA. When did you leave, Jay? What year did you... I left in 2010, baby. That's when I started. That's what I mean. So I left and you began. Uh, babe, my so, face is on the wall now next to Michael Ball. <laughs> <laughs> babe, Josie, here's a cute little connection for you. So you're the end the end at Footloose. Who yeah. choreographed that? It was Gary Lloyd. Gary Lloyd. Can you tell it. us about that experience? Um, Gary Lloyd was amazing and he came in and he auditioned us all and I remember us all being terrified like oh my god it's Gary Lloyd and we just all wanted to impress him so much and um, I mean when I got Rusty I couldn't believe it I knew I wasn't really an, an I could, probably could play Ariel but I knew I was more of a Rusty and I just didn't think I'd get the part and I was up against some of the like top girls in my year and then I did and then do you know what? Since then, I've had such an incredible relationship with him. Then I did the Tina Turner, Tina Tina Turner, Tina Turner Arena tour with him, which went international. We did like arenas full of forty-five thousand people. So that was my third job. Then obviously he cast me as Carmen in Fame. Then and now I've done Heather's with him. So like four th contracts or shows with him. So obviously Footloose wasn't a contract, but yeah, mental. Like obsessed. With wow. Him. He has so. So Life Changer began at maybe getting Cover Elphaba. Was that a Life Changer Jodie moment or what, what, what was your Game Changer or amazing yeah, I, think, I think it probably was. Like, well, to get Carmen the year I graduated was pretty mad. I saw that as well. You're amazing, yeah. Oh, God, when we took In LA up. Do you know, I don't even know how I did that. Looking back at it, it was just mental track. Um, 
yeah, uh, but yeah, I think the alpha birthing was was Carry a big on. old was a big old move. Do you know what I mean? And I just couldn't believe wow. it when I got, I was like, what? <laughs> I remember what when was... my I just sat on the floor, cried. I was like, what? Yeah, what was that I... phone call like? How how do you take the words like that? How do you listen to the fact that you've just got your dream? Well, I take it it's one of your dream roles to cover. Yeah. Up. Well, she just, she was like, um, do you fancy playing Elsa for me? And I'd been waiting to hear. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> She's like, you've got it. I was like, oh my God, I was only 24 when I got the job as well. Like, just mad. Like, I'm so lucky. And sometimes I'm like, how did I get that job? Like, because I remember being in my final and absolutely mucking it up and I had to go back and do another final. Wow. Um, and was the yeah, other was, final better? Yeah, the, the the final final I did was was okay. Um, but it's just a daunting thing. Like even if I went back in for it now, you know, I'd have to re-audition again. Probably not from beginning round. But even the thought of like singing that song again with the team, it's just so. A bit what's, of what's, the, um, what, what's the pressure of playing Elphaba? What is what is that feeling? How do you Relax. How do you put it into perspective of making it, using a feeling and, and making it work for you? It's just, you. To, to be honest, you kind of have to have a bit of anxiety and, and adrenaline and uh, to get through that part. It's just such an odd experience. And um, it's also, I think, you know, there's been so many, how do I say this? Like so many alphabets that have struggled mentally because of the role and I think people mistake it it's not just the thing it's the fact that it's the pressure and how famous the part is and how famous the songs are and the effectivity of you night after night and the fact that you know you get ready by yourself and you're always late for warm-up because you're getting green and you know you never start the show with anyone you're by yourself and everyone hates you on stage because that they have to all dislike you because you're green I think it just ends up like building up and then obviously at the end of the day everyone leaves and you're still in the shower getting your green off like it's a demanding role it's um is it quite a lonely role yeah 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 you, you you're never with the ensemble really ever or the party you never see glinda backstage like no, I'm so lonely. And did, did you struggle with it when you did it? Did you did you struggle with the mental side of it, or did you were you like, oh, this is fine? Um, I did. I remember a specific day we were in Shanghai, and I was about to do as Joe was starting. For whatever reason, I just got so anxious, and I'd never really struggled with anxiety before, but. I really, and I, I, can literally, I can literally close my eyes and relive that moment. And I remember turning around to the back and seeing Emily Shaw, who played Nessa Rose, who, so, who I still am so close with, and just being like, help. I just, and I just, I don't know what it was. And I had, I was on form that day with my voice, but I just, it's like I wanted the floor to swallow me up. And I remember having tears in my eyes as I was singing, with, like Wizard and I in the verses, just being like, I need to get off this stage. And it was just so bizarre, and I don't know why. And I don't really remember it being that bad after that, but that particular moment, I, I can really remember quite vividly. And um, and since then, I do struggle with anxiety. And, you know, I don't know. It's a difficult thing, isn't it? Because we love it all so much. I hope you I don't mind me asking um, about that, because I know it's quite personal, but I think it really helps other people. And for me as well, it means a lot to me. So thank you for opening up about that. That's fine. Means a lot. So, oh yeah, let's let Wicked was amazing. Also, was how was it an added pressure that you're in different countries playing Alphabet and you're boiling and you're you don't have your necessities. You're, you're shopping at Taiwan boots. Like I know that's I ridiculous, did. but boots so is the I one did. thing yeah. I miss. Yeah. I miss boots so much. When I was on a ship, I was like, I need to get me essentials, babe. I can't go yeah. down the market. It was so um, hard and we had to be really careful as well because they obviously have like places like that but all of their products out there have bleaching because um, right. lighter coloured skin is seen as lucky so you couldn't go out and buy a, 
a moisturizer because they're well potentially there could be bleach not all of it but most of it and um, food was a big thing although I'm quite you know experimental with my food so I didn't quite mind it and I tried all the street food but I had I had a funky belly at times put it that way <laughs> oh my god so let's so wicked finishes and you probably you did some other things but Okay, now now we're skipping forward. Did you do the workshop of Heather's? No. No, but Liam did. How funny. Liam did. Uh, did he do Dominic's yeah. part? Yeah, uh, no, he did Kirk, Kirk Kelly, so Chris Chung's part. Wow, okay. He so did how did Dom? Wow. And Dom's lovely, yeah. isn't he? Wow. Yeah. Um, big teddy bear. So, big teddy, yeah. So Tell me how it came about, how you felt, were you expecting Heather's to be the most massive thing since sliced bread? Like, how did it all come about for you, personally? Um, well, I heard about it. Yes, Lucy Cook, I am doing my washing because I have a busy day today, all right? <laughs> it's a mad day today. Um, it came about because, um, well, I, I had heard, I hadn't ever heard really of the show i heard a bit about it at drama school i remember everyone being like oh the heathers blah blah, blah. i didn't know enough about it and then when liam did the workshop he was like babe you don't understand like the fans go mental for the show and i was like okay cool like cool but like didn't really like sit in my head or anything i didn't really like dwell on it or look at look at the show and then when i heard that it was coming to do an actual run at the other palace i had so many text messages from pals being like you have to be at the Chanda. And I was like, I really need to check the show out. So I did. And then I was like, yeah, what a part. Um, did you immediately connect with it? Did you immediately think like that kind of thing when you're like, there are parts you might not be right for, but this one may, I can do. Yeah. I just knew I was right for the part, which is weird because I'm so not like that. I'm a bit of a like, dorky kind of like goofy. Uh, but I just, it's just my niche to go for that kind of like hard faced, you know, let female dog. I don't even know if I can say that word, so I won't say ah! <laughs> Well, I've just been playing the songs, mate. It's fine. But like, the, I, I think vocally, yeah, but yeah. really, I think more than like Elphaba, it's Elphaba's acting as well. But this is what a character and that was acting. The thing. Yeah. And the thing is that I noticed, I haven't seen the show, but I've seen clips of it, but like the way you embody it, and I don't know if the Americans installed it into you, but how like your body and your actions and, and the movement is so, so slow, important. isn't it? The way she yes. walks, yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, like, there's a scene going on and Jodie's like still on stage, like she's walking off, but she's like still there. <laughs> and it's two scenes in, she's like this. I love it. Yeah, the whole charm kind of. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. What work did you do on it, like on the character and stuff? Well, I I came in with it doing too much energy. I was doing too much. And it was Andy Fickman. And the, the word that resonated with me the, the most was regal. She's regal. You have to make her regal. Um, so I went away and thought, you know, I need to be more still. Because the thing with Chana, she has to have... So much gravitas and um, so much pull from the audience and the actors around her that she shouldn't do much. They come to you. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I had to, and that's not me as a person at all. I give way too much as a person. I'm needing, Same. like, please like me. Same. <laughs> so, Same. You know, yeah. so it was difficult for me, and I remember um, being in the room and big fans of you know Sophie Isaacs always I mean now she's like my, my sister and but I was always a huge fan of hers and Becky Locke a huge fan Carrie Hope Fletcher a huge fan and suddenly I was being nasty to all these people that I had so much respect for in rehearsals because obviously as a Chandler like and I after every time it was like because Andy used to be like cut action because he's a film director and every time he'd be like cut I'd be like I'm so sorry <laughs> I didn't I didn't mean that I, I just have to do it that way <laughs> Man, and it's it's that kind of thing, isn't it? Like, how how did you deal with the kind of fandom and the the extra kind of the different like your inbox going crazy? And I can imagine you're the kind of girl that wants to answer every single one with a yeah. private message and a and a card. But I reckon you <laughs> do you get to a point where you're like, actually, I I am answering by 
reaching out and putting up the post and saying thank you. But how do you answer every single thing? And how's that possible? I used to, and then it got so much. And my my message request on Instagram, I apologise to anyone who messaged me on there, and I haven't responded because. I, I, it's it's just so it's long it's so long I, I think if I tried to go through every message in my message press I'd be there two weeks straight like which and it, and I'm not saying that that happens to me every day because I'm obviously not famous and a normal person but like I, I just I try to flick through and, and go for the ones that I think oh um, but sometimes it, no I can't it's so bad isn't it I wish I could respond to them all but I just don't have enough time. It's awful. I feel bad about it. But I am so happy for anyone who's ever messaged me and I've never responded. I will one day, I promise. <laughs> oh, no, that's so, that's no, that's amazing. But, so what was what was your favourite part of the show for you? Let's talk about the show. What was the most kind of rewarding moment? Um, I love the end of Candy Store. Like being in those spotlights. Um, and I loved, I loved when I suddenly became a ghost in me inside of me and all the stupid dancing that I did, like <laughs> across the back and like <laughs> all of that. Um, oh, so funny. And, um, but my, my most, the, the bit I loved the most was when I was in, um, was dead, um, the dead Chandler, who's obviously just a, like, uh, a figure in Veronica's mind, so I purposely wanted to make that part Chandler very different to the alive Chandler, which is why it was more brash and more bit quirky. Um, and it was it was meant to be yours that whole moment and dead girl walking reprise and just being dead with the kind of croquet mallet and just being like really stirry and like <laughs> I just loved that. I felt epic. Felt like a real kind of warrior, even though I was playing a dead teenager. <laughs> that would be a Mr. Liam oh. Doyle getting home right now. He's been playing golf. I'm on a live. Oh, he's me. gorgeous. I've got a match. Oh, you're your face. Oh, really there he is. Hello. Hello, mate. You're all right. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? He's good, thank you. Um, oh, good. If, good. Right. if you could move abroad, where would it be? That's from one of your fans. Oh, Australia. Australia, amazing, yeah. amazing. Unless it was for um, work, and then I'd move to LA. This is a good one. How essential is drama school? Um, well, Liam didn't go to drama school, and he's had a fantastic career. So, That's you know, so I true. think it's, it's, it's right place, right time, I guess, if you haven't been to drama school, and if a part comes up that you're so correct for. Um, but that, you know, that's taken a chance, I think make it easy for yourself <laughs> do you know what yeah. I mean because it's already such a hard industry to kind of break into so I think make it easy for yourself and just go to drama school like why not awesome, do you know awesome. What I mean? so um tell us so okay Heather's was incredible then comes six oh my god yeah. like well between wow. that was Rock of Ages as well so it was a bit of a mad it was before lockdown. It was a mad three years. But, um, yeah, six is epic, man. It's like, And do you know what? I'm grateful for Heather's because I was pre prepared for the... Because, you know, people, I, I'm really, like, keen on social media and I love it. But I get so worried about what I say and if I offend anyone. And just that responsibility to kind of... Because a lot of people will be like, oh, you're my inspiration. And that's amazing. And then I feel like I, I need to, like, deliver the goods to to kind of remain that and so I think that kind of I learned how to deal with that and how to to try and become a, you know be a good person and, and give people something to look was, to was, um, from Heather's so I was yeah. prepped for six there that world the queendom is just like whoosh, mental was six like um was 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 Howard a role I was saying to Sophie it wasn't something for Sophie that Sophie was like oh my god this is my part la 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 with you, when you saw Sophie Atkinson do it, were you like, that's a bit of me, mate. Let me get my hair. No. <laughs> you, mean, you mean Amy Atkinson. Right? Amy Atkinson. I did this earlier. I did this earlier. I'm so bad. Do you know, no, I should not be Amy's doing the job I'm my, doing. Amy's one of my dearest. I had a FaceTime with her last night. And I love her. 
because we did Legally Blonde together. She was Serena and I was Margot. Oh, um, amazing. Yeah, and I just adore her. Um, but I never thought I'd be in it, no. But when I, and I'll be honest, the first time I watched Six was when I watched it on Broadway. So February. So I hadn't seen it when I went in for it. And I hadn't seen it when I was rehearsing or anything. So I was literally like going off what I thought Howard was. Um, I think people are always like, you play it so differently, but I didn't know what I was going off. I was just going off whatever, um, you know, my, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word? <laughs> what you think. Yes, um, yeah. thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you think, but when, um, when I kind of saw all the clips and just the vibe of each queen, I was like, well, I'm definitely a Howard. Like, I just, I just thought, you know, it's again, that kind of niche for me. So yeah, I think when I, when I did a bit more research on the show and kind of got into it, I watched a load of YouTube videos. I was like, Howard, got to be. What pop, oh, this is a good question from me. Um, what pop star would you most liken Catherine Howard to? Oh, Ariana Grande or Britney. Really? Oh, it is, isn't it? It's based on her. Yeah, so I think she is very much like Ariana Grande. Because, you know, Ariana Grande is sweet, but she can be like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, and she is a bit feisty on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what, I think... What, um... Go on. what pop song would you say is all you want to do most like? Good question. I'm a slave for you. Yes, yes. Because, you know, there's a hidden meaning behind that song as well, you know. If you think about the context, I'm a slave for you. I mean, I was dancing around my living room to that, absolutely. And it's like, how wrong that was. Um, and the hidden <laughs> meaning. So, so tell me, like, okay, so I love the fact that you think, oh, all I want to do, all I want to do. You've got, like, the juxtaposition, like, the contrast from we're having a boppy song by, from the start, you're like, woohoo! And by the end, you can yeah. go quite severe and quite like, I was a bit like, I watched it in the audience and I was a bit, by the end, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. So, I was not, a bit like, freaked wow. out. Yeah. Do, do you play that as well? Is that something, I mean, you have to, but is that yeah. something you really go for yourself as well? Yeah, yeah, totally. Massive switch. Bye, I want <laughs> Bye! <laughs> I'm gonna take quiz prizes. Yeah, we're doing it, we're holding a quiz tonight, so he's dropping around. Oh, oh he's um, lovely. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I always wanted there to be a dramatic twist. But the clever thing that Lucy Moss is so amazing at directing you with is there's a seesaw effect around verse three, where you start mm. speaking about Henry, then he starts saying all this stuff. Yeah, so much, he calls me love. It's gotta be that like, Simple. It should be the audience being like, wait, hold a minute. I'm, I must be watching this wrong. Or is she okay? Is she switching it? She's switching yeah. it. Like, you want the, the audience to think, is that actor okay? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then to realize in the, the fourth verse, oh, geez. Like, because sometimes the claps for all you want to do are like, really. Uh, yeah. 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 Cause cause by it. that point, she's like, yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm after. You know, I really want people to be like, wow, that like, Yeesh. I feel like you're not a feminist, but I feel like you're pro, like, female, feminine. I think you're very much like that. So I feel like this subject matter would be maybe something that is really important to you. Not that I'm saying you've been through it, but I'm saying that I think you're, like, hero to the women. And I think any woman would want to tell that story and support anyone that might have been through kind of that kind of thing. Yeah, massively so. I'm not a feminist at all, but because I also don't agree with the fact that sometimes men are, are pushed aside because they're a man. I just, I can't wait to I agree, I agree. Humans, when will that happen? You know, who cares what they look like, where they're from, what culture they are, what they believe, and just let people do them thing. Like, I just, I just can't wait for that day where a human is just a human and we can see past everything else. Like, surely it just matters what's inside of them rather than, but anyway, um, yeah, I, it's no, a huge thing, thing for me. And I think um, the, the thing with me is, um, uh, my my main love in this industry is acting and telling stories and creating characters and, and creating an effect on people um, when they see a show. So I think actually 
for me, Howard was a gift because yeah, you get to do the whole girl band thing and that's great. But my, my song in particular, Out of Them All, has such a hard hitting message that mm. I can, you know, really go for gold on that kind of the acting. That you um, don't and, see and, coming. Mm. Yeah, at all, at all, at all, at all. And I, you know, when people are like, oh, you, you really affected me there, or I, I you know, I'm, that's like, yes, great, cool, that's what I wanted to do. Like, I'd rather them come away being like, gosh, that gave me goosebumps and, and you made me, um, and you made me feel, um, my, my next door neighbor's dog, sorry, I just have to show oh, you all. thank you. Pal. <laughs> oh, she's doing a meeting, so I'll come in, actually. Um, we kind of all sit, like, on this grass bit outside. Uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so I'd rather people come away from the show saying about my performance that they were um, taken aback or shocked or saddened or, I don't know, rather than, oh, you've got a great voice. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Because you've had that from day dot, I'm sure, anyway. So, yeah, but with the role, you want to give more than that. And it's about what you can give. Um, um, so what's next, Jodie? After six, I know lockdown, but what, what, what's, your dream, what's your dream role? Um, I'd love to actually, in musical theatre, I'd love to delve back into Wicked One Day and actually play Glinda. Um, and I'd love to... I'd I love wasn't to expecting do... that. Wow. <laughs> I know. Um, and I, I'd love to play Molly and Ghost somehow. Please, someone put it on. It's just my dream part. I don't know why. Well, I do. It's, it's a, a show close to my heart and for, for personal reasons with a family member that died. But just the way that when Case Leader came out on stage and those dungarees with the curly blonde hair and the white trainers, I was like, oh. <laughs> um, uh, I just love that show and I'd love to play that part. But my main my main path that I'd like to go down now is I really, really want to crack TV film. And I don't mind how small the parts are. I just Because I'm so, not obsessed, but just so passionate about the idea of, of... I always try to feel like when I'm acting, not to act, but to actually be yeah. the character. And I think you can get your teeth into more stuff like that, kind of more in the TV realm and film realm and just creating, you know, real stories and real humans that are so far removed from myself. And yeah, so I'd, lo I'd love to go down that path. And it's going to be a tough old battle breaking that boundary, but I'll try. I think you can do it, absolutely. Why don't they make Heathers into a film musical? <laughs> That would be well, awesome. I mean, it's already a film. <laughs> well, but they get, it's not a musical film. So that, that, you're the That's musical cool. version. That'd be good. Um, thank you so much, Jodie. We're going to leave you to um, do your washing. But <laughs> I would just like to say thank you. And I, I just one note, I wasn't calling you a feminist, but I'm not coming on here calling Jodie a feminist. So no one go and say, we've just found out big news, Jodie's a feminist. She's not no. at all. She's Jodie Steele. She doesn't have a label. She's just really cool. And, um, and I do have an announcement. Me and Jodie had a chat and I don't know how she feels about it. And it's not definite, but would you come and do a Jodie Steele masterclass within the next four months? 100%. Amazing. So you heard it here first, guys. Jodie Steele Masterclass. <laughs> it's going to be four hours long. It, no, I'm joking. It's just going to be Jodie, <laughs> Jodie singing about her life. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's going to be good. And um, we'll do some different things and maybe little snippets from your music and a longer Q&A. And it'll be really, really fun. So, yeah. yeah. yeah and, uh, It'd be nice just to talk to you. I know. Since we discovered, me and Jamie discovered we're like the same human, haven't we, Ben? We are. It's so funny. And it's so funny that you said about projecting, um, because that's my problem, is that I have that, like, come on, like, as an actor, I've got that, like, come on, like, uh, I must give, if I'm not giving my all, then I'm not good. And when I yeah. played Rocky, when I played Frankenfurter, I just kept on, it's that same uh, Heather Chandler, um, it's that same feeling of you guys need to come to me, but I was like, huh, like pushing it out there. And they just yeah. said, you're doing too much. And I always get that. So I can relate to you. Yeah, I totally know what you mean. It was just very complete opposites on those characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's a massive Sometimes learning I can't be so Sometimes it's a little bit easier to play a character that's so far removed from yourself because also the ones that are very similar to yourself I find difficult as well. 
Do you mm. like where's that line? Am I actually mm. playing a character here, like, or am I just being an extended version of myself? So sometimes, mm. but yeah, it was it was difficult to um, be so mean to people and th like throwing Carrie's head into a metal bar. I was just like, oh, <laughs> oh my god, and it's so dark. Some of it, I'm like, oh my god, and some of the girls that watch are so young. Yeah. Did you have an age age restriction? They say 12, I think it's 12, is it 14? I think it's 12 plus. But it's only a guidance. Wow. So we had like some eight-year-olds, 10-year-olds. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, honestly. It's All right, been my amazing. darling. And um, <laughs> you're wonderful. And I've literally, guys, just sort of let you know, I've made a friend with Jodie Steele, um, and I've never met her. So, <laughs> I think of her as one of my really dear friends, and I was so alike. It's so Yay. strange. And honestly, like, mate, it. thank you so much. It got, they, they've just been watching us have a little chat with a cup of coffee. It's been lovely. <laughs> you mean a lot to oh, me, babe, and you, you you've so really much. helped me with this. Oh, you're okay. a dream. So much love to you, my darling. So much have love. Love, love you. Day. Bye, 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 bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye, bye, everyone. Thank you for joining.